Cherkis here and I'm very excited to be with you today and share a fun fall card. Um, I'm excited to kind of share this coloring process. It's a easy coloring process and I think sometimes in our lives we just need some easy creative fun, right? So I'm going to be using the new Grateful Gatherings stamp set that was illustrated by my friend Kelly Taylor. So excited uh, to see her design some stamp sets and have them out in the crafty world for us to play with. And so I'm gonna use this main image of the pumpkins and sunflowers and the gourds and the leaves. Um, but then I'm also gonna be stamping a couple of the individual leaves as well. So as I mentioned, I wanted to share with you guys an easy approach to coloring. And I think you could do this whether you're using Copic markers, any other alcohol-based markers, or any coloring medium that you choose. What I'm doing is I am actually just going to be using two different colors per image, per area. And I'm starting by coloring the light color first. Then I'm going to go in with the darker color and I'm not going to really worry about shading. Kelly did an amazing job illustrating this image. So I'm using her illustration as my guide. I'm adding the shadow and the shading where she added the line work. So I did that with my second marker, my darker marker. And then I take my lighter marker and I just go over that shading one more time to do a little blending. So you'll see I'm going to do the same process coloring all of these images. Before I talk about that a little bit more in case you are using different coloring mediums, I just want to mention um, it's really hard for me, the change of seasons from summer to fall. I live on Cape Cod in Massachusetts, and I'm a mermaid at heart, and I love summer. Gosh, I love summer so much. So fall is really hard for me. I actually adore fall. I just don't like what fall brings, which is winter. But anyways, moving on. I love in the fall when Chris and I will go to our local market, our local farm, and we pick out some really fun and funky pumpkins. And I don't know if you guys have had them in your area, um, but that's what inspired this cream colored pumpkin and this earthy teal pumpkin. You guys know if I find a teal pumpkin, I gotta buy it. So back to coloring, if you are using something different than Copic markers, this will work the same with any alcohol-based markers. If you're using colored pencils or watercolor pencils, this will work the same as well. Basically, you're just gonna color with your light image first. You're gonna use the stamp design as your guide and add in some dimension and some shadow. And then you're going to color over it and blend a little bit with your lighter color again. Now this center pumpkin is a bit larger. So I am going to get a little wispy with my shadowing at the base and at the top because I have a lot of space to work. And I was just having fun coloring. Um, and so when I go back to the lighter color, which you see here, I am again, kind of using that wispy flicking motion to kind of blend it out and fill in the pumpkin a bit more. All of the markers here, I'm trying my best to keep them on screen. I'll be honest, sometimes I get coloring and they might not be in the best position, but I always share a swatch list on my blog post for the coordinating card. So whenever I color with Copic markers, I scribble out a swatch list. I mark out which Copics I've used. And again, I find that this is helpful, not just for those of you that are coloring with Copics, but for those of you that are coloring with any medium that you're coloring with, you can see that swatch list and maybe swatch out your medium and find similar colors if you want to get similar results or a similar look to what I did on my particular card. And of course, that's for this card today with that fun honeybee design stamps, but I do this for all of my blog posts and I share a lot, you guys. So if you haven't checked out my website, I hope that you will. It is linked in the description of this video. Um, 
And yeah, I would love to inspire you uh, more frequently. So here I am, I'm coloring these little leaves. I'm kind of envisioning their eucalyptus. Kelly, if you're listening to this and that's not what these are, please don't judge me. Um, I am not a flower and plant connoisseur. It's just not my jam, but I like coloring them. So I'm adding uh, kind of this minty green, uh, light green, sagey color to all of these little leaves that look like eucalyptus. Another tip is when you're coloring an image, go ahead and look around your image and color all like things together. That kind of helps speed up the process. Obviously, I've sped up this video just so that I'm not taking up too much of your time today. However, I will tell you that this card came together really quickly. Um, I think that before I edited down the video, um, it was about an hour and a half. And that was partially me deciding what to do with the background and finding dyes and finding ink pads and such. So it, it was a fun card. It came together really nicely. And I really just was enjoying coloring these fall images. So let me know in the comments, um, do you like to color? Do you not really like to color? And you would like some tips on how to make it more fun and easier like this. Um, and then also let me know in the comments what your favorite coloring medium is to use. Do you use alcohol-based markers? Do you like to watercolor? Uh, just let me know. I love to watercolor. I've done several videos here on the Honey Bee channel and on my channel um, sharing my watercoloring with Distress Watercolor Pencils, but I decided for today to break out those Copic markers again. So again, just to reiterate, here I am, I'm coloring all the image with the light color. This is actually not how I normally color, but it does make things go pretty quickly and it keeps the blending and the shadowing really nice and simple. So I'm coloring it all light and then you're going to see I'm going to go in with a darker color and add in some shadow. So for this instance on this leaf I'm just flicking up from the bottom um, where all those lines are kind of coming together. And then just to kind of smooth it out a little bit, I'm um, going back in with the light color and blending. The centers of the um, sunflowers, I am coloring them all light and I'm actually using the same brown for the stems on the pumpkins. And then what I'm gonna do is use a darker brown and I'm coloring kind of the texture of those centers of the sunflowers where like the sunflower seeds are. And the stems for the pumpkins are so tiny, you do not have to use a second marker if you don't want to. Um, but again, sometimes I get going on coloring and I just wanna continue on. And then these little uh, green sprigs here, I just kind of kept one color. I had a lot going on and I just kept it simple. So I die cut all of these images with the coordinating die set. And now I'm cutting down a piece of dark craft cardstock to be four and a quarter by five and a half. I used a scalloped circle die that I have um, in my stash to die cut a window frame out of this dark craft cardstock. And then I'm using a piece of the new Homestead Harvest pattern papers. These pattern papers are beautiful, you guys. It was really hard for me to choose just one. And now I wanna add a sentiment to my card. So I'm gonna use the new heartfelt hellos and I'm gonna do some white embossing. So whenever I do white embossing, I prime my cardstock with the Rabbit Hole Designs Cottontail Powder Tool. And now I'm using white pigment ink and I'm stamping it three to four times. I find the first time the white ink kind of absorbs into the paper and then the second, third and fourth time it really sits on the paper to hold on to your embossing powder better. And that's how I get a really nice crisp white embossing. The combination of the cottontail powder tool using a white pigment ink and stamping multiple times is key. 
So now I'm adding some foam squares to the back of this craft panel because I want to have it raised up against the pattern paper. So it's like a little frame. And I'm just kind of figuring out where my pumpkin montage and my greeneries pieces are going to go. And so I'm deciding I'm going to, I knew my pumpkin was going to go in the center here. So I'm just adding some foam squares towards the top of that area and letting it sit and rest onto the bottom of the craft paper. And once I get this placed, I am going to kind of tuck in these extra little leaves that I die cut and colored. So I'm only adding foam squares to the tops and I'm adding some wet glue at the bottom so that they'll look like they are reaching out from behind um, the little seam. And honestly, I should have thought through it a little bit more and been careful where I put my foam squares on the pumpkin image, but I didn't. So I'm kind of working my way where they're fitting and where I think that they look good. Here I am putting my card front on a card base. <laughs> if you know me, this is a challenge of mine. I don't do this very often. Um, and 2023 is the year I'm trying to get back into the habit of being better about putting my cards onto card bases. So just throwing it in the video to be held accountable. So now if you also know me, you know I like to glitter all of the things, but I do actually have a hard time glittering fall cards for some reason. Um, it's probably the only genre of cards that I have a hard time glittering. However, Distress Rock Candy Glitter is really a nice subtle sparkle and it also adds some really fun texture. So I'm using some Distress Collage Medium because I just think it's a little bit stronger to hold on to this thicker glitter. And then I'm adding some of that Distress Rock Candy Glitter. Uh, you'll see it better at the end of this video because right now it's cloudy and white because the glue hasn't dried. And then to add a little bit more sparkle because again, uh, my name's Jen Shirkus, and I like to glitter all of the things. I'm adding a few of the Homestead Harvest gem stickers. I can't tell you how hard it was for me to not put these teal uh, gems on, but those will definitely be used on an, another project. The brown ones, I think, look really, really great um, on here with the coloring of the rest of the card. So here is a final look up close so you guys can see how fun that Distress Rock Candy Glitter looks when it's dry. It adds a little bit of sparkle in a subtle way, uh, a little bit of shimmer and some fun texture. I hope this card has inspired you guys to create some fall cards and to remember coloring doesn't always need to be complicated. And I hope you guys all have a fabulous day. Bye.